Have you ever wondered why we don't just swap out batteries on electric vehicles? You've probably heard about this idea before because Tesla was one talking about going this route for their vehicles and NIO in China has actually gone ahead and worked this into their vehicle designs. But the technology has never really caught on. Was it because of not being able to agree on a standard? I think the North American charging standard would prove that different vehicle manufacturers can come together to standardize a major component of electric vehicles. So why aren't we rolling into battery swapping machines to get a fully charged battery in five minutes or less? When I first started prepping for this video, I was certain of my conclusion. Battery swapping is the answer and it's the way things should go. But as I did more research, I found out that it's more of a nuanced story. The result is that, in my opinion, battery swapping for non-commercial vehicles probably won't take off as a solution. And if it does, it probably won't be the full battery pack that is swapped. But for transport trucks and other large vehicles requiring the ability to travel great distances constantly, battery swapping might be the best option, at least for now. Do you agree or disagree with this? Let me know in the comments below. So let's start with why I thought battery swapping was the future of electric vehicles. My first point was speed. Currently, even the fastest charging electric vehicles can take around 20 minutes to get from 10% to 80% charge, which can mean as much as 350 kilometers or nearly 220 miles in range. This requires special charging stations that can pump upwards of 350 kilowatts into a battery management system designed to handle that kind of power. 20 minutes, when compared to the average of around two to five minutes to gas up a car, is a huge difference. Most electric car fans, including myself, will quickly shout out how after two to four hours of driving, that it's nice to stretch your legs, use the washroom, grab a bite to eat or a drink, and that you don't have to babysit your electric vehicle while it's charging. But 20 minutes is currently the ideal and not the average experience. Often, chargers will not run at the vehicle's maximum speed from start to finish, and depending on the weather, the acquired range from charging might be 20 to 40% less. So now you have a charging cycle that takes around an hour and only nets you around 150 kilometers of range or nearly 100 miles. Would you be happy stopping for an hour after every hour and a half of driving on a long trip? I know I wouldn't. Wouldn't you rather stop in at a station that looks like one of those multi-bay oil change places or maybe like a car wash and get a full 100% fully charged battery in your vehicle in five minutes? Back in 2013, Tesla showed that a Model S battery could be swapped in less than 90 seconds, which is faster than most gas vehicles take to refuel, but around two years later, the program was discontinued due to a lack of interest. NIO, a Chinese EV manufacturer, continues to run battery swapping stations and has more than 1,300 of them that have swapped more than 10 million batteries. Access would be another reason why battery swapping could be advantageous. Many apartments or dense urban environments don't have easy access to charging infrastructure where vehicles are parked, meaning that many people can only charge their car away from where they live. I am currently fortunate enough to have a garage where I can plug in our hybrid, but previously none of the apartment buildings I've lived in have had spots for electric vehicles to charge. The next reason I thought that battery swapping would be great is that it's better on the batteries. The faster you charge batteries, the more heat the process generates and this, as well as other factors, cause a higher wear and tear on batteries, shortening the amount of time that they can remain at their original manufacturing capacity. No one wants their experience with cell phone batteries to happen to their cars, where in three years the range on their car is half as much as it was when the car was first purchased. While advanced battery cooling designs, chemistries, and materials have come to the aid of large vehicle batteries in use, there still is a higher potential damaging effect by trying to charge batteries faster. Battery swapping stations could charge batteries slower, causing less heat and potential wear and tear on the batteries, allowing them to have a higher capacity for longer. Connected to that is the idea of getting a healthier battery. Imagine for some reason the quality of your battery is poor. You could go to a swap station and they could put in a newer battery without that issue and the company managing the service station could take your less good quality battery and recycle it or reuse it for other purposes. Of course, people would be concerned about getting a battery with less effective range than their original or purchased battery, but I think that concern would diminish over time as people became comfortable with the technology. There are three other potential positive side effects of battery swap stations and technology. The first one is that the battery could be charged during lower stress times on the electrical grid. 
Currently, many people charge their electric cars after work, either at a rapid charging station or at home. And this can add to issues with our current electrical grid, especially as more people convert to electric vehicles. So if we used a battery swapping station, they could, in theory, charge more of the batteries during off-peak times. The second benefit is less need for high power links. Currently, as companies are trying to create more charging infrastructure for electric vehicles, they are needing almost their own specialized grid infrastructure to draw enough energy to charge multiple vehicles at the same time. This increases the cost of installing high-speed chargers and again has impacts on our electrical grid. The third benefit, and the one that I think is cool, is the idea that as battery technology improves, you could swap to batteries that have more capacity or that are lighter, allowing for more range. Imagine having a battery that provides you with 450 kilometers or around 280 miles, and then swapping it for one that has 600 kilometers or approximately 370 miles. Now, not only is the battery swapping faster, but as the technology improves, so does your vehicle's range. Or taken another way, maybe you could select the battery based on need. What about a lower capacity battery for when you're around town? Something lighter with an okay range, but nothing too crazy. You need to charge it or swap it once or twice a week to get to work and to home as well as do some errands. And then when you're going to do a longer distance drive, you swap it for a larger capacity, heavier battery that can go the distance. All of these are nice ideas, but they definitely all come with drawbacks. And none of the drawbacks I'm going to start with are actually what turned me against the idea of battery swapping. I'll get to that a little later in the video. The first key issue is standardization. While many different companies are moving to NACS for their chargers, the name alone implies that it will not be a worldwide standard, and beyond that, we've been seeing CCS chargers on vehicles for a very long time. So to get every vehicle manufacturer to position their batteries in around the same spot and use the same system for connecting and disconnecting the battery, and providing a similar battery compartment size and shape would all likely be non-starters. On top of that, we would need infrastructure for these battery swapping stations, including some slack in the battery supply available to sit in the recharging bays everywhere that people would need to swap batteries. Assuming that there is even just two extra batteries waiting to be swapped in per bay, and only one bay for each battery swap location, and you would still need hundreds of extra batteries available per city to make that system work effectively. And what if you arrive at a charging station and none of the batteries are fully charged yet? You'll still likely need some secondary charging infrastructure or some rapid charging options for the batteries so that they're ready to go more often. Then on top of that, there's battery wear and tear from being removed. Put somewhere to charge and then move back and affix to a vehicle. There are opportunities for the battery to be damaged in that process each and every time it is disconnected and reconnected. And of course, depending on the location of the battery, having it sit under the car potentially exposes it to damage from rocks and other objects. To protect the battery, you would likely need some additional material, which could add weight, reducing the efficiency of the vehicle, something we want to avoid. So with all of that out of the way, I wanted to highlight my two main reasons for moving away from battery swapping as the best solution for fast charging vehicles. The first one is that the speed of charging is improving. Certain solid state battery technologies will likely allow for faster charging times. I'm not sure how much faster they need to get at this point, but if advancements can provide a charging time of less than 10 minutes for each hour and a half of highway driving time, then I think we're starting to get to a point where most people would be happy. And on top of that, if we can improve the range of batteries by increasing the amount of energy a battery stores for a given volume, then we can go longer between charges as well. If you can charge a car at most charging stations in under 30 minutes for every 600 kilometers or around 375 miles of driving, then I think most people would say that the range anxiety and charging frustrations pretty much go away. If you drive at typical highway speeds, you'd be charging every four to five hours of driving. And at that point, you actually really should be getting up, moving around, rehydrating and more. And the second most important change in my understanding that has moved me away from battery swapping is that many batteries are being integrated into the structure of the vehicle. This means that if you were to pull the battery out, if the vehicle wasn't supported properly, it could compromise the integrity of the vehicle. Or if you were to compensate for that by adding more structure to the vehicle, you'd be adding weight, which would decrease its overall operating efficiency. Batteries as structure is becoming more common, not less. But transport trucks could be a different story. When you're looking at transport trucks, they have batteries as large as 850 kilowatt hours compared to under 150 kilowatt hours for most electric cars and SUVs. So needing to charge a dozen big rigs at a single truck stop could require multiple megawatts of DC power to the chargers. In Australia, 
Janus Electric has shown off exchangeable batteries, which can be swapped in minutes and takes advantage of all the things we've discussed previously. They've converted some diesel powered trucks already, changing out the fuel tanks and attaching swappable batteries at around 620 kilowatt hours of total capacity, providing the trucks with a range of around 400 to 600 kilometers or 250 to 375 miles. Don't get me wrong, I do think that electric vehicles are the future of transportation. I totally expect to not only own an electric vehicle someday, but also to have an opportunity to fly an electric plane. Check out my video on electric planes to learn more about my thoughts on flying on electricity.